Hey, welcome again on this Saturday morning, the day between Good Friday and, and the resurrection, the silent Saturday when so much is happening, but we can't see it. Uh, today, I, I wanna just continue as we've been talking about this journey to the cross. And of course, in the story, Christ has already died and he is in the grave. But I think there's a lesson here in the anticipation side. You know, when Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. He's talking about a promise. He's talking about an opportunity. Following Jesus in the cross is the most life-changing, life-blessing thing to do. The reason we don't do it is because we've got a human instinct to protect our lives. And Jesus is promising us and pulling us out of that fear so that we will let ourselves go. Jesus said, if you try to save your own life, you'll lose it. But if you let your life go for his sake, then you will find it. So why don't we embrace that again and let Jesus just talk to us and challenge us in a new way so that we can live in that promise even more. Today, I wanna to talk about um, the burial of Jesus and what people were expecting to find on the after the Sabbath. Remember, Jesus was raised on the third day. So Friday, he is crucified and taken down from the cross, buried. Saturday, he is entombed. And then on the third day, it's not three 24-hour days, it's on the third day, Sunday, Jesus is raised from the dead. Now, that's after the Sabbath. So the people that were uh, you know, followers of Jesus know that that's their moment to go to see Jesus in the tomb. They couldn't on Friday. The Sabbath, the Saturday, they can't. And so they're going there on Sunday morning and they're expecting something. Now, we can tell what they're expecting by how they came. So Luke chapter 24. Now, this is a story of Sunday morning. It's not Saturday, but I, I want to see, show you that it's actually the Saturday mindset that comes on Sunday. Jesus to them is dead. And so it says in Luke 24, verse one, on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they'd prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed at this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. Uh, that's dazzling in brightness, not dazzling in uh, you know, coolness. As they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's not here, he's risen. Remember how he told you how he was still in, when he was still in Galilee? That the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. What day is it today? This is the third day. And they remembered his words. This is, this, this is what, the people of heaven, the, the, the angelic forces, watching this event, seeing the authority of Jesus Christ when he says, I will die and then I will be raised. Don't worry, don't doubt, it's happening. They do, They didn't doubt, they didn't worry. They knew it, somehow, even spiritually, they watched it happen. And so when they see these people come with spices for a dead body, spices to prepare a person for burial, not remembering that Jesus was anointed for his burial before his burial, that these spices are for dead people and they're in a graveyard looking for a dead person. And the angels say, why are you, why are you here? Didn't you, didn't you remember he said this was happening? He, this is the third day. If you've shown up here for the body of Jesus, it's, that's the day he said he wasn't gonna be here. He's, he's raised. And that's what I think that in our lives, we are just not resurrection focused. In almost everything, when we look at letting something go, we are never really anticipating the resurrection. We always look at the crucifixion side. We always look at the, the death side. We never, with faith, embrace the power of the resurrection. We have this fear of letting go, of giving up our rights, giving up our position, our opportunity, our lives, giving up our money, because we truly believe that if we let something in our lives die, well, it's just gone forever. You know, when Jesus was talking about his crucifixion in John chapter 12, he said in verse 24, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, one. 
But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And then he says almost the same thing as we've been talking about. Whoever loves his life will lose it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So we have to have a different attitude about the resurrection. Because Jesus said every single seed that's planted ends up in a multitude of things. But in order to do that, it has to be buried and die. And then it produces more. You plant your fields that way. Why don't you live your life that way? Well, that's us, isn't it? We're just not resurrection focused. The resurrection is better than what we're holding on to now. The resurrection opportunity is better than our past hurts. We should let them go. It's better than our power and control, the thing we make out of our lives. The resurrection is better than all of the money and the influence that we have. As we let go of money and influence, we gain far more in the resurrection. It's better than opportunities and rewards. It's better than the positions and the current roles that we have. It's better than the lie of the temptation and the pleasures it's pretending to offer. It's better than the religious goodness that we have and the pretend outward morality. You see, all of the things that we have are things that we make, we do. Even our kind of our religious appearance, our, our morality and the respect that we get from that, all of that goodness, it, it, all of those things are made by us. And for us to say, well, I'm going to let go of those things. I'm going to let go of my self-righteousness. I'm going to let go of myself. I'm going to let go of my resources, my opportunities, my power, and let it go. Every time we do that and have fear, it's because we don't believe in the power of the resurrection. Jesus raised from the dead is more powerful and better than Jesus who just stays alive. And your life is the same. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, he says, Brothers, I don't consider that I've made it my own. But one thing I do, I forget what's behind and I just keep straining forward to what is ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And then he says, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if any in anything you think otherwise, well, God will reveal that to you also. He says, I'm going to trust that God can help you in this. He's going to reveal it to you. But mature Christian faith is a faith that constantly sees the resurrection in front of you. That's why Paul says, I can let go of all my accomplishments. I can let it go of my life. I can let go of all of these things. Those things are not, those things are good, or sometimes I'm letting go of bad things, but those things don't define me. I need to die again to them and I need to be raised again because it's going to be better. Every time I let go, it gets better, not worse. And so I think that in this time on the Saturday morning, as we sit between the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. I think it's important for us to put our full faith in what God can make of our lives rather than fearing what we lose. That when we surrender to him, whether that's our religious goodness, our appearances, our money, influence, and power, the, the, the things that we cherish and value that are really oftentimes just a, a weight around us. Don't help us. You know, sometimes the things we build up become the things that we have to carry with us. So we need to let those things go, but we let them go with faith in the resurrection, knowing that God will raise us from the dead. Maybe you want to join me in a prayer right now and just say, Father, I pray and I renounce. I renounce my need for the things in my life today that make me feel better, the things that make me feel more complete, the things that make me feel important and happy. Lord, I renounce those things. I let them die with you so that they can be raised with you. Lord, help me to believe in the power of the resurrection for every detail of my life so that I no longer fear letting something go, but I embrace the life of the cross, of surrendering 
for Jesus and to Jesus so that the life that I live, I live by the power of God in resurrection, knowing, Lord, that you take everything and you raise it from the dead. Everything I sacrifice, you raise up into new life. So, Lord, I let it go now. And I pray that you give me great faith in the future that you have for me based on your power, not on mine. Lord, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow on Easter.